Good afternoon, and uh, <coughs> thanks everybody for uh, coming today for this discussion, and uh, thanks to um, the welcome from Audrey on behalf of the Musqueam people. A lot of uh, the protocol is still unfortunately verbal because the reality is that the land is still treated uh, as colonial annexed lands. Um, and also to Michael and Samir for opening the discussion so far. Uh, in, uh, on May 16, uh, 2015, uh, both the Liberal and Conservative parties voted uh, 183 uh, for Bill C-51, defeating the 96, uh, including the NDP Green Bloc Québécois and Force Démocratie, who voted against it. Um, the Liberals promised major reforms to the Act if they were elected, um, but despite the very large wave of Canadian public opinion mobilized to oppose C-51 last year, uh, and which was a very definite ingredient to uh, defeat Harper, um, they, uh, we don't see any sign of the uh, promises to do major reforms to the bill. Uh, they continue to defend the secret police powers, privilege, and impunity all greatly expanded by C-51, and the Liberal defense of this orientation doesn't bode very well. Ottawa Liberal MP David McGinty, brother of former Ontario Premier Dalton McGinty, made a trip with Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodall to Britain recently to study British parliamentary oversight of their security apparatus. David McGinty has been appointed to head up a committee to review oversight provisions with legislation possibly in June. Two things immediately come to mind. One, the very notion that rights, including rights to security, can be defended by police powers, which are outside the rule of law, is irrational. To study a model from Britain is even more preposterous and irrational, given Britain's long history as a colonial power whose use of secret police powers over a couple of centuries illustrate their mastery of using secret police as a key instrument of their divide and rule power in the colonies, including Canada. In Vancouver, we have the case of Charles, uh, William Charles Hopkinson, British police agent, imposed on Canada in the, uh, disguised as an immigration inspector in the Canadian Immigration Branch in Vancouver, who's noted for his role in the infiltration intelligence on the Gandhiite independence movement in North America in the early 1900s. He played a major role in the Comagata Maru incident in 1914, and among other deeds, hired assassins to murder Vancouver residents active in the Indi Indian independence movement here. He was himself shot by Mewa Singh in the Vancouver courthouse. When I investigated the Koma Gadamaru incident in India House in Britain several years ago, the librarian complained that M5 had scooped up all the historical records so we couldn't even find the name of Hopkinson's secret agent successor who was imposed on Prime Minister Robert Borden back then by none other than the visiting Duke of York, the King's brother. The librarian considered this an unwarranted but consistent M5 disregard for maintaining an open historical record. There are so many other examples of secret police activity by the British in Rhodesia, South Africa, Malaya, Greece, even Tsarist Russia, let alone modern day Ireland, notorious H block prisons leading to the deaths of many Irish patriots like Bobby Sands. Uh, during the Thatcher regime, that to look to Britain as a model of supervising security agencies really indicates how deeply Anglo-centric and colonial uh, the liberal mindset is with respect to secret police agencies. When I had a chance to confront Justin Trudeau in person at a picket at a demo in uh, Burnaby, uh, we were demonstrating against C-51 when we were speaking, he, de he defended his father's use of the War Measures Act as a means of ending terrorism in Quebec. When the Army occupied Quebec on October 16, 1970, some 500 persons were arbitrarily imprisoned without habeas corpus. What emerged during and after the event was the role of the political police in inciting these events, much as we see in the so-called sting operations of today. Through the history of state racist attacks in Canada and state terrorism, we have seen that without definite organized forces behind individuals and groups, their actions do not materialize, and this shows the role of the political police since the time of Borges and Cardinal Richelieu, the Tsars, the British, the French, Belgian, and Dutch colonists, and U.S. imperialists today. As 
concerns the events of Quebec in 1970, who was behind the murder of Minister Pierre Laporte is still shrouded in mi mi mystery. We do know that political institutions like the bookshelves of CPCML were smashed and their proprietors were beaten and thrown in jail. The passing of emergency measures for an apprehended insurrection in which the Commission on RCMP wrongdoings revealed the dirty and secret police were not an aberration. It's the Canadian way. The RCMP went on a spree of illegal intelligence activity, including the infamous barn burning theft of Parti Québécois membership list, the planning of a bomb by then former RCMP Corporal Sampson, which exploded in his hand, and the other RCMP wrongdoings, leading to the McDonald Report and the formation of the Canadian Security Intelligence Services in June 1984. Then we come to Supreme Court Candidate Justice John Major's 31 key findings made by the Commission of Inquiry into the investigation of the bombing of Air India Flight 182 on June 22, 1985. He sums them up as a cascading series of errors. But if you read his report, even the key findings, which include removing every possible obstacle to ensure that the impugned bags actually got onto the Air India flight in Montreal, you can't help but conclude there is an eerie and even dark linkage between the faults of Canadian security and the dark work of Canadian and Indian security police as an integral part of the invasion of the Golden Temple in Amritsar in June 1984, ordered by Indira Gandhi, which not only led to a massacre within the Golden Temple, but degenerated into anti-Sikh pogroms and mass killings of youth, as well as the assassination of Indira Gandhi herself, and subsequently of her son, Rajiv Gandhi. The thread linking these historical events is the use of secret police security agencies to actually accentuate problems that by their very nature should have been approached in a political manner through consultation, negotiation, and the affirmation of basic rights. What we have is that the arbitrary police powers define the rights which are permitted in what is, in what is called the government of law. In my opinion, the people should provide a modern definition of rights and, and governments must be duty-bound to uphold them. This is not presently the case. Since Canada was founded, the arbitrary powers, the queen, the prerogative, the royal prerogative, the authority of executive uh, of the state, have defined rights. This is why when Trudeau Sr. finally enshrined them in our constitution, he also enshrined reasonable limits defined by the arbitrary powers, including, of course, the, uh, the section that um, allows provinces to opt out of, a, out of the Constitution, the notwithstanding clause. Now, in the post-Cold War, post-91 period, the particularly egregious features of C-51 and the crimes against Arar and many others, uh, which Michael and, and Samir have, have, have referred to, make C-51 not amendable. Therefore, the necessary no to repeal C-51 remains a political task. But what is the yes we need to organize and discuss to counter the expanding arbitrary surveillance security state here and abroad? Unless we have a rule of law which recognizes our no, our yes will remain meaningless. The rights permitted in the civil society were defined by the arbitrary powers in the first place. And now even they are becoming meaningless as a result of the interests of private owners of immense wealth and privilege. We need to make our no effective. Taking the blinds off what C-51 and the entire discourse on state anti-terrorism really means is an important task as is organizing the public in political discussions and assisting our fellow citizens to acquire the confidence and courage to defend their rights, the rights of all, and actively stand up against agencies like CSIS, the RCMP, CSE, the border agencies, and so forth. The more the public take to meetings, discussions, and the streets to push forward their agenda, like stopping the irrational Site C proposal to name but one, the more this yes 
for a renewal of democracy and empowerment of the people advances, the faster we tie down the Liberal government and have C-51 repeal. Imagine the Lilliputians in Gulliver's Travels tying down the giant Gulliver. Or reflect on Bertolt Brecht's poem in praise of learning, of learning, which concludes, don't be afraid to ask, comrade. Don't be talked into anything. Check for yourself. What you do not know yourself, you don't know. Scrutinize the bill. It is you who must pay. Put your finger on each item. Ask, how did this get there? You must take over the leadership. Thank you very much.